Hey guys, welcome back. It is April 17th, 2024. Yeah. Holy cripes. Uh, man, this year is starting to go by, guys. Welcome back. It's Redness Day. <laughs> it's Redness Day today. Holy shit. Hey, it's Mob Vlog. Hey everybody, grab a coffee and cannoli. It's time for Mob Vlog with my friend Adam Flowers and Red Wamet. Hey, Red. How you doing, Adam? You gotta, you gotta, you guys gotta hear this shit, okay? Red said to me, what is our topic gonna be about today? Right before we went live. He said, what's the topic again? You, can you guys believe that? Welcome back, everybody. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Here's what we do. We talk about the Chicago outfit, organized crime, history of Chicago, and things relevant to Chicago, including Italian beefs, Chicago hot dogs, we talk about Bozo the Clown, Empire Carpet, Magic Kiss, you you name it, Chicago, including the mob, organized crime. We, and today, we're even going to talk about O.J. Simpson. Why not? You know why? I'll tell you why. Because we have O.J. Simpson autographed books for sale. That's why. We're going to bring up O.J. Yeah, wow. no, I got No, autographed O.J. books. These are autographed by the man himself right here. And they're numbered. He did these while he was in jail. And the judge actually had to rule to allow this because he hadn't been convicted yet of the memorabilia being stolen. So anyway, we talk about all kinds of stuff on the show, guys. I'm going to tell you where you can get these at frankcolata.com. That's where they're going to be available. I don't know how much they're going to be. Um, we just had this last minute thought today as we were going live. <laughs> and uh, my buddy Art Kelly said, hey, man, I went, Yo, you're absolutely right. He has a whole crate of these things that he had done. And um, maybe it's time to sell. Them. So anyway, guys, welcome in. Let's say hello to some of our uh, regular viewers, Red, shall we? Julie M. We were just talking about you, Julie. Oh, yeah. Julie's going to be a moderator on both of our channels. Well, I'm asking. Well, no, no, no. If she wants to be, I mean, if she doesn't want to be. But I mean, Julie, if you want to kick people off the channel, then you'll be able to. And uh, <laughs> why not? You know, I know I think she's a good judge of character. I think she'd make good decisions. You just just click on her, click on her thing, Red. And then, OK, hold on. Let me just say uh, delete comments. No star comment. I don't know how you do it, but you can do it somehow. Those three little buttons on the right. Oh, just no, that's not it, man. I, I'm looking at those two. That's not it. It's not how it works. I'm looking the wrong way. I should be looking at this screen. That way I'm facing you. All right. So Chicago outfit. Was it better when the mob ran Chicago? Wasn't it better when the mob ran Chicago? Is it better now? Look at our mayor in Dalton. Come on. And now you got Beetlejuice going to investigate the mayor of Dalton? Are you kidding me? So is there a mob in Chicago? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there sure is. They're all sitting there in the, in the, I'm the mayor of this, I'm the, fuck out. Come on, see, that's all it is. It's all become po political, right, Red? Oh, yeah. Or am I wrong? I mean, I could be. Well, there's some, there's some criminals out there that claim that they're connected, but I don't know who they're connected to because nobody answers to them, and they don't answer to anybody else. So how can they be outfit? There is no more. Sure. There's old outfit members that, you know, retired, but that's it. Yeah. Um, Bobby Bag of Donuts, welcome into the show. It's nice to uh, nice to uh, to see you today. We haven't seen you in a while. Julie M, a mob. Uh, Vegas was much better when the mob uh, was involved. Corporate greed has taken over Vegas. Julie, you've said it. Corporate greed has taken over Vegas. The city of neon, the lights, the glitz, the glamour. Ah, uh, really? It's not. It just isn't what it was. Steve Martin, hey Adam and Red, I'm tuned in, and uh, hi from Steve in Scotland. Hey Steve, Scotland. Wow, man, we got people all over the damn world watching this thing. Yeah. Why? Why? Old guy sitting in Florida, old guy sitting in Vegas. Let's just sit there and kibitz and bullshit, and uh, let's all hang out. We have a fun community, guys. If you're new here, you're just tuning in. It's a fun community. Look in the side comments enjoy we uh we we have a great great uh fun group of people who all are um, they're very real and they're very 
Oh, real people. No, they're very real. Think about it. I mean, they're they they're 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 they're. What can you what say? It's a community. It's a family. It's a family. It's a group, and they're they're we're friends. So, I like it. Julie, welcome in. Scott H. It's good to see you, buddy. Scott's been on every damn tour that I've done in Vegas. He's <laughs> Scott's real. Yes, he is. <laughs> damn real, man. And uh, yeah, we've hung out for a while. I like I like you, Scott. You're a fun guy, man. Every time you could, I don't mean to call you a mushroom. He's a fun guy. No, he's. <laughs> Uh, I love you, buddy. Larry C. Now the trustee of Dalton is facing sexual assault charges with a police department employee who was then fired by the corrupt mayor. Investigation again by Beetlejuice. So, <laughs> tune in later to see As the Stomach Turns. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. No, I mean, didn't she take the Hayward's her name, right? Is that it? Yeah, she, Tiffany Hayward, I think, is the name. She she's using the local cops as her security department, and then buys all these SUVs and shit. Like she's the you know royalty going around town. I yeah. rolling around Dalton and rolling around in that fucking stink hole shithole fucking town. The one cop, the one cop, she pays him like sixty thousand uh, every two weeks. Every two weeks. How much? Sixty thousand every two weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Come on, man. That's 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 uh one point four million dollars a year. Can't be. <laughs> He's doing that's one point four million a year. I just did it in my my, my head. That's She's it. doing it, but you know her salary is what uh, three hundred thousand a year. And, and she's and, the highest paid mayor in the entire country, right? She just did an executive order that says as soon as she's out of office, it goes down to 20, 24,000 or something. I heard something about that. Is there a mob in Chicago? Shit. Go look at the news. <laughs> Come well, on. We also have a terrific mob of immigrants, too. <laughs> well, that's true, too. I, I hear that they're having problems with that in Chicago. And, uh, yeah, Chirac, baby. Chirac. That's it. You drive the Dan Ryan, you're going down the... Uh, never mind. <laughs> I don't want to get... I don't want to get... I don't want to get... No, listen. We call that the turn Pop, 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 pop down the Dan Ryan now, okay? It's not... I mean, come on. Be there. For those of you that live in Chicago, God bless you. May peace be on to you. <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to still be there. Hopefully you're outside. Your mom, your mom says, no, it's in Dalton. <laughs> it's in Dalton. Yes, it's, it's in what it is. Hey, mom. Yeah, guys, that's my mom. That's really my mom. That's not a made-up thing. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Flowers. I'm going to see her uh, tonight. So we're going to have, um, I think, food again. We're going to have dinner. So anyway, um, Robert Murphy. Hello, Mama Flowers. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. It's No, it's uh, th uh, things are rotting in Denmark. Julia. Things are rotting in Denmark. The only mob in Chicago are the politicians. You take, uh, that's exactly it. It's what it is. Mickey Griggs, it's Shy town Shy town That's what we called it, Shy town Or Chirac. Years ago. You got bullets flying around there. Uh, Shy town It used to be something. It used to be something. It really did. What was it like? Oh, it was great. In the 70s, dude, before I even was born. Anything you wanted, you could do. Anything you wanted. And the crime was, a, it was a different kind of crime. It was petty crime. Big crime, they either got away with it, did something plain. But they killed a lot of people. The outfit killed a lot of people. It was nothing to find somebody on Lower Wacker Drive in the trunk of their car. Oh, no, Hare Airport in the trunk of their car. The bobbies were popping up. It was always in the papers. It was on the news at night. But the average person, they didn't get involved in it. They only killed their own. I mean, there was no innocent bystanders in those days that got killed. It was somebody that knew what they were doing. They no, no, they were, they were, they were innocent bystanders. Not back in the, in those days. In the beginning, there wasn't. There were or my my era of the seventies. I don't remember anybody. that was just an innocent bystander standing by that got killed. Wait it was a second. That got involved. We're contradicting ourselves here because a couple of weeks ago we said that there were tons of bystanders that got killed. Like, Not 
and uh, who was the one with the shotgun to the the what's the the name of the guy uh, the the van with the shotgun? Billy Dauber in Charlotte. Yes, see, Charlotte was a bystander. Was I mean, you know what I mean? There were bystanders that took that was, in the 80s. that was in the 80s. Okay, that was in the 80s. We're talking 70s, right? Right. That's what you asked me. You said, what "Well, was just, I said back in the day, I didn't really say specific time frame." What's what happening? You know what's happening now? People are rewriting history. They hear something, might be for me, and they take it for gospel, and they say, oh, yeah, it's a fact. Right. And now they spread it around, but they change it just a little bit. They tweak it so they understand it, and they put it out there, and they say it's a fact. Is it a fact? No. You know, in total total consciousness of all of our, I hate to go here, but <laughs> human existence, right? They're, they're talking, if, if the scientists are right, and let's say that the earth wasn't formed in seven days. Just hypothetically, let's just say It that. wasn't formed in seven days. It was formed in six days. The seventh day was rust. You're right. <laughs> you correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Thank you very much. That word. The seventh day is for rust. You're right. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Yes. All right, let's just say it took millions of years for the Colorado River to make that Grand Canyon <laughs> over there, okay? Let's just say, hypothetically, it took a little long time. Human consciousness, and meaning conscious, the second we were conscious is when we started to write things and started to record. Petroglyphs, hieroglyphs. That's only like the the, the oldest the oldest form of that shit's like 3,000 years ago. Think about that, Red. We're a flash. It's more than that. They found oh. caveman, they found caveman uh, drawings on the wall that are <laughs> look. No, there's three three thousand years back, man. Is when we have the first recorded writing, actual writing, and, and not just drawing a picture. No, but actually putting right. putting down a sentence on on paper. We is is a species. I mean, we haven't been around very long. Well, not only that, not everybody had the same language. No, I'm not even able to pronounce Italian names. <laughs> yeah, but it used to be a lot closer than that. I mean, 20 miles. A friend of mine told me when he was in Sicily, he said, you go from one town to the other. Those people never leave that town. They have a different dialect. The yeah. same same language, but a different dialect. So you can't understand them. That's right, Jagoff. <laughs> <laughs> you learn the <some> language. <laughs> All right, Dave Gimp. Uh, Grimpy, uh, who was it that was found in the car trunk at the hotel right by Arlington Park racetrack years ago? I don't know that answer. There was a lot of them. <laughs> uh, by by the racetrack. Hold on, hold on, Red. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta answer this one. Okay. It, hey, Art, we're live on air right now. Um, I, Hey, Art, we're, we're live on air right now. I just told everybody about the OJ books, man. Okay, well, they sell for $150 on the internet plus tax and shipping. So if we sell them for $125 a piece, you get $25. I'll okay. Make a hundred. They can't get them yeah. cheaper in the world. And you got the case. You ship them out, right? We'll get them on the website, man. We'll put them up there. $125, you say? Yeah. All right, guys. What? 125 plus shipping for the O.J. Simpson books, autographed. Yeah, um, they're, they're sealed. They haven't even been opened. They're sealed. They haven't been opened. And what's the deal? They had to get approved by a judge for what art? Excuse me? I'm sorry. They had to get approved by a judge or something, you said, for them the, well, these to be done? Well, he was in jail for the murders, and this, uh, the son of Sam Law, where a convicted murderer cannot profit, uh from you know any book or any any type of sales but he hadn't been convicted he hadn't even been to trial so the judge approved it and they signed three thousand of these copies and of course i got the cases from uh his ex-manager um that were sealed cases you know all numbered um and yeah there's you can't buy them cheaper anywhere in the world can't get them anywhere I, else all right, Art, we're going to get them on the website. Everybody go to frankcolata.com or mobmento.com and uh, and grab an OJ book. They're going to be up there for uh, for sale. I'll call you later, Art. Thank you, buddy. Bye. I like Art, man. He's a real dude. 
He said the judge hadn't ruled whether I, it was that the first trial or the second. No, one? this was when he was in. He was in jail for the murder of. Yeah, of, of he, the he, he yeah. one paraphernalia, and I said, oh, "Whoa, on a Sam Law, you cannot profit from murder charges and whatnot while you're." Which is funny because Frank Collada got paid to do the in the movie Casino, which I, I guess you could. Do. I don't know. I mean, I, it's a use the real names. Yeah, use the real names of the people. OJ, OJ signed these. Yeah, they'll be available, and they're all numbered. So, I don't know if you want to collect memorabilia from, you know, football football guy. If you're a sports person, you know, I mean, or if you're into murderers. You know? <laughs> Chills. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Brady, 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 dude, I love you. That's a killer deal, guys. Yeah, have a stab at one of these books. <laughs> <laughs> killer deal, Red, killer deal. Come on, that's a great pun. Yes. Oh, man. Have a stab at another joke, Brady. <laughs> hey, we're slashing the prices on these books today. <laughs> Come on, that's funny, dude. It is. Uh, who did the Park Ridge elevator? Yeah, the elevator murders. The four guys that were in the elevator in Park Ridge. The Ponzi scheme that went bad. Larry C. wants to know. Who, who were they? A Ponzi scheme. That, that? that was an alarm thing for an alarm company. They work for an alarm company and they get bad information on the alarm. They were innocent bystanders? No. They were involved? Oh, yeah. Just Nobody like the guys who... Thing. Nobody ever proved anything, but they were involved. They all worked for the alarm company. <laughs> the crowd wants a Bronco. Keep the book. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the gun. Keep the cannoli. <laughs> Was OJ related to Homer? Maybe they were somehow. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I mean, you know, because Homer was yellow, so <laughs> they could have been though through marriage. You never know. The juice is on the loose. <laughs> Jesus, you guys, hey, if you haven't seen it, we did post a video a few days ago, and it's Tommy Riccio, the guy who put the recorder in the room, all right, who who set OJ up and got him arrested. He put the record. You guys got to go listen to this interview. It's freaking good. I mean, he, he talks about, because he got the recorder out of the room after the police, and then he sold it to Harry Levine over at TMZ, called him up. Harry said, I'd give you a million dollars if it was video, and he could have with his iPhone, but he didn't know how to use it. Listen to this interview. It's freaking good. He ended up getting a hundred grand for the recording, and in the recording, which is 10 hours long, not in the video. Don't We don't play 10 hours of this. <laughs> That'd be a long video. But when the cops, the Metro cops were in the room, when they didn't think anybody was in there and they didn't know they were being recorded, he's got them on recording going, that motherfucker got away with this shit in L.A. He ain't getting fucking off here. We're going to get this bastard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a freaking interesting interview. Julie M., I saw that video. It was awesome. Yeah, it's an awesome video. And it, 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 it didn't get much circulation because everybody's posting OJ shit right now. But go to the channel and go. I, put, watch I it. also put it in front so nobody cares what I did about it in my room. If you're on Facebook, go check it out. By the way, guys, hit the like. Doesn't matter if you're on Facebook, YouTube, you're just coming in, hit the like button. Um, so, did OJ sign while wearing the infamous glove? <laughs> if you, fit, you got to acquit. He never wore those again. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's just, God. Unbelievable. Back to the guys that got killed in the elevator. One of those murdered men lived in uh, Country Club Hills. So, um, Gacy was sued. Oh, shit, Mr. Hoffman. Here we go. On to John Wayne Gacy. How do we go from, we're going to talk about the Chicago outfit and this and that to John Wayne Gacy. This is the same way that we end up end up, end up, end up on the murders. entire carpet we guy. About murders. We start talking about murders at dinner. All right. So, he was sued by the state of Illinois for reimbursement for the cost of his incarceration. He was profiting from his artwork. Again, that's that son of Sam Law, which is why can't can't just go signing books and making money while you're in jail for murder. Is that it, didn't isn't that why that whole thing came about, Red? Yes. 
It, it, it is because he's people some, actually in New York, why, New York people would uh, get convicted and they would just write a book about it and they get millions of dollars from their book because they'd be telling the truth about what the news blew up and in the meantime they'd have all the money in the world they needed on their commissary they were celebrities in prison and that took away the whole idea of going to prison <laughs> so they passed the law and son of sam was the first one they used him as an example supposedly oj's bronco was up on pawn stars is that it right was. Was? It it was. Was. i i didn't know that one well, damn rick was looking at it all right to all the girls watch all the females all of our ladies the real ones yeah okay, the ones that have wombs the real people the what no the ones that have wombs <laughs> i'm just fucking around to the girls put in your comments what's the deal with this infatuation of wanting to marry a guy who's in jail what what's that what's that whole like oh oh i i love this guy i want to because didn't charles manson he got married right before he was before he died to some young young girl do you, you remember he that? was married several times he was married several what's the deal joshua allen thinks it's because they like uh bad boys so you somebody who did some heinous shit you want to go oh i love that guy I, oh look I, at look at the menendez brothers both of them are married <laughs> they Bobby are bag of donuts what happened to misty i don't know i haven't seen misty in a while have you Fred? no she hasn't been around. No. I haven't seen Misty. I hope Misty's all right and everything's going well. I do, too. Um, Vicky Griggs. The women that can give birth. That's what I mean. Uh, Leanne's like, not for me. She doesn't want anything to do with it. And she's a truck driver. And she has no, no, there's no attraction at all to something like that. Um, <laughs> frauds with mental illness. I don't, I don't know. I don't, because... I, because I don't want to say that. I don't want to say there's something wrong with them. They have some compassion or some shit in their heart that they wanted to. I don't know. Well, what's the deal? Seriously, Julie M., I don't get it. Maybe they just want the fame. Attention. Okay. I'm I'm down with that. Um, hello from Scotland. McZag Jan is back. What's up? <laughs> All the way from Scotland. That's two from Scotland today, isn't it, Red? That is correct. Hey, do you, are you guys neighbors? <laughs> I just you know if we're in the same country. <laughs> uh, Scotland, isn't that where the Loch Ness monster is? Or my that's, that's where the Loch Ness monster is. Yeah, we talked about it. Does it exist? Does it exist? You guys, tune in. You guys, if you're new here on the show, we talk about Chicago history. Red's from Chicago. Um, I'm from the south suburbs of Chicago, and he lives in Florida. I live in Vegas, and we talk about Chicago history. And but most importantly, we're just here to interact with you guys. And uh, you're you're really the you're really the, the you're the channel. Yes, we want you all to be happy. <laughs> Zag, does that mean that you've seen the Loch Ness? Have you seen Nessie? Huh? Have you, Sherry Gould? All the way from Chicago-ish, Hegwish, maybe. <laughs> She's from Hegwish. Sherry, it's nice to see you, darling. I hope you're doing well. Um, I'm I'm so glad. Big win. Our um, our friend Paul, we got his, his Facebook page memorialized <laughs> late last night. What are your Facebook people? I don't know why this happens, but it keeps happening. <laughs> Joshua Allen Marshall. Red is also... Uh, one of the few people to enter Mad Sam's basement and walk out. That's true. I'm the only one alive. <laughs> only one alive. God, Sherry. Yes, it is awesome. I'm. I'm happy. Paul would be happy. I know he's smiling down, looking down from heaven. Yeah. All right. X. I, I, uh, I think that was a great caper, Adam. <laughs> it was great. Mm. Hi, Red and Adam. Hey, X cop. Nice to see you. Don Berlin just Don, dropped in. I haven't in. seen him in a long time. I haven't seen Don for a while. Just dropping in to wish both you had read well. Been gone and O'Connor's a long time. But see the shows on a replay. Many fans from USS Carney. Carney in the Mediterranean Sea watch the Op Center and say hello. Hello, all you guys on the USS Carney. Hey, guys. I salute you. 
Thank you guys for uh, for your service. That's awesome. Thank you, Don. I appreciate we we appre- we all appreciate you dropping in and giving us that message. Thank you, Don. Don's in there. Don's a real dude. He is. Yes. All right, Jim Magnifici. Nessie might be hiding under one of them uh, kilts over there. <laughs> Brad, the kilts, the Scotland, the guys that wear this. A skirt. He doesn't even get it. <laughs> right over his head. <laughs> Seriously? People say, well, why are you going to sit there on YouTube and talk? You know, people are going to sit there and listen to this. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Irving Brownstone. I, I think I've seen his moniker before. Uh, hi, Adam and Red. Happy Redness Day. Irving from Kansas City, Missouri, or Missouri, if you live there. Uh, actually, my name is Ian, but I had a friend who would call me Irving Brownstone. <laughs> okay. Hate to say it, but my Royals gave your socks a whooping today. Kansas City Royals. Well, thanks for the whooping. You're sa- uh, you got to be a masochist or a sadist. Which one is it? A sadist, the masochist. The, anyway, if you're the whoopings, which one is it? I always get that confused. You got to be weird. That's all. Which one likes the pain? I don't know. Um, sadist is the one that inflicts it. So it's got to be the masochist. The masochist likes it. So the masochist said to the sadist, hit me. And sadist said, no. <laughs> <laughs> That would really hurt somebody. <laughs> I gotta know the I gotta know the, the roles for that joke to work. Okay, so <laughs> Julie, hello guys. Thank you for your service. Yeah, it's awesome. I, I Javier, Javier, tune in on my channel right after this. We're gonna do an after show on my channel. Right we met. Oh yeah, we're gonna answer your question. Mm-hmm. I'll answer your question then. Yes, yes, yes. Don Berlin, thank you, and uh, salute and thank you for your service. Right oh. I like our channel. It's very patriotic. We are. Yeah. I, I am. You are. Yeah. I may want to put up a, a an American flag, you know? Make a nice moniker. Sure it would. <laughs> oh, gosh, Red. Unbelievable. DDG64. So is Canal. Okay. Red's building a smoker. Yes. Yeah, that's going to be, that's a thing. I'm, I'm helping Red put the video together. He's building a smoker. A UDS, an ugly drum smoker. Uh, a what? A UDS? Yeah, ugly drum smoker. Ugly, ugly drum smoker. That's what they call them down there? Yes. Down there right where you're from? Where? They got them in Indiana. They got them in New York. They got them everywhere. Okay, a UDS. I don't see any in Las Vegas, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. You know, my buddy down the street has one. He does. Yeah. So, hmm. Ah, so, um, Don Berlin, thank you for your kind words, uh, Adam and Red. God bless. Carney is in a, uh, in Arlia Burke, Ar- Arlie Burke. See, this is why I didn't join the Navy. It's <laughs> Arlia Burke class guided missile destroyer, USS Carney, DDG 64. Transited to the Suez Canal and entered the Mediterranean Sea to support the mission SF. Yes, dude, these guys are these guys are heroes. Seriously, I I, I totally. You know what, Red? For all you guys over there, again, we salute you. I love it. <laughs> there I you go. It. There you go. Oh man! All right, back. Let's see these uh, comments. Um, um uh, yeah, yeah tony johnson all right let's go with it when someone burns the lgbtqia what the fuck how many letters are there soup <laughs> a b c d e f g h a j k l m n o p plus two I, I all right or palestinian flag they are a hate crime but when the u.s flags burned it's free speech I always hated seeing the U.S. flag burn, man. I always like, why do people? Back in the day. Day. I know, and you're freaking go back. They burned them in Chicago. Ta- let's talk about the riots in the '70s. Tell us about it, please. Well, it, that was in the '70s. It was uh, you're talking about the '60s, man. No, it was, it, yeah, it was Mayor Daley. It was it was uh, anybody that with was uh, that was in '68. Oh no, anybody anybody with uh, 
Well, come on, it was shoot to maim and shoot to kill is what Mayor yeah, Daly said. That was the Democratic uh, Convention, 1968. Okay. I, I, I just got out of the Marine Corps. And uh, there wasn't too much flag burning then, but they were starting to decide whether it was a the state of Illinois, whether it was a crime to burn the flag. And it was in the state of Illinois at that time. If you burned a flag, you know, in protest, you went to jail. Mm-hmm. Now I see these people walking down the street doing it all the time. Oh, I'm protected. You can't touch me. Try that in Chicago back in the old days. Those coppers would have beat you to death. <laughs> Talk about police brutality, George Floyd. I'll tell you what, those days, it happened every day. <laughs> True, man. It's... You know what the famous cops used to tell me? They used to tell me all the time, hey, you want to sue me? Get in line. There's a backlog eight years with the county. Your case may come up eight years from now. By that time, I'll be off the job. And who knows what's going to happen to you? <laughs> yeah. Marine was getting discharged. Colonel came up to him and said, you know, you're going to be discharged tomorrow. And uh, I know what you want to do. You're going to want to piss on my grave, aren't you? And he said, no, sir. I swear I'm never going to stand in line again. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. See, that's one for the troops, man. They like that shit. That's funny. Oh, yeah. I swore I'd never stand in line again. I'd never stand in line again because you got to stand in line every fucking where in the... Right? Oh, man. Uh, all right. Uh, was uh, was off the coast of Iran in 1980. USS California, CGN 36. John Wallace. Right on, buddy. You know, I had a friend that was in the Navy, and I said to him, like, where do you guys... You know, I, and he said, just picture the worst shitholes in the world, okay? The absolute worst shitholes. And we're sitting up a few miles off of their fucking land. That's where they are. They're in there. They're on the ship. They don't go ashore. All this bullshit that's going on right now, every, you know what's trending on X the other day was World War III's trending. And I looked at it, and I'm like, really? People are, you know, thermal nuclear war is about to happen. You know, bomb drop day. I don't, you know, I tell you what, we're going to have fucking problems though, Red. We're going to have problems. Because you know who's right behind the ran is China and Russia. Oh, yeah. Well, Russia doesn't. They're fucking with Israel, man. And it's like, eh. Russia doesn't want a nuclear war. No, nobody does, do they? Only that fucking that, that, jag, off in, that jag off in North Korea. That's probably the only one that wants a nuclear war that just doesn't give a fuck. You know what? When I'm dying, I'm pushing the fucking button. It's kind of it's kind of jag off there to do something like that. Uh. <laughs> okay, so we're talking about the Chicago outfit, and now we're on thermonuclear war. Do you see how this show goes, everybody? <laughs> uh, when I'll leave on your grave, won't pass for flowers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Unbelievable. Okay, Joshua. Joshua Allen Marshall. My grandpa. Je- Are you going to push it or am I? I'll do it. <laughs> Brett and I hit the same button four times at the exact same time. I put it up. He took it down. He put it up. I took it down. Timing is everything. <laughs> My grandpa Jack was in the army stationed in Germany just after World War II. My uncle Roy and grandpa Tom was in Vietnam. My uncle George was stationed in South Korea. My cousin Bill was in Iraq. I mean, you got a whole family full of soldiers. Josh, what happened to you? What happened to you? How come you didn't join up? <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, you got to have that legacy. Like, uh, uh, come on, who was the guy in, um, in Forrest Gump? My dad was in this war. My grandpa was in this war. I'm supposed to die in that. What was his name? Captain. Captain yeah, Captain. Uh, Come Captain, on. Captain Jack. What was his name? Captain, what was it? Captain Jack. Come on. What was it? What was it? I forgot. Dan. Captain Dan. Captain Dan. Is that it? Dan. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Chicago Joe. Yes. Captain Dan. That's Lieutenant Dan. It was Lieutenant. Captain not Dan. Captain. Thank you. Lieutenant Dan. That's right. Should be like Lieutenant Dan, Joshua. You need to get in there, man. Get in the get in the shit, right? Yes. 
Uh, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark were murdered in Chicago in 69 under Daly. Yes. Kevin Rathard said, uh, seems little has changed. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> A little. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, Kraut, thank you very much. I was in a real shithole. It's called. Good luck I, pronouncing this. Anime. Anime. You said good. Good luck pronouncing this. Did, did, did you booty? Did you booty? Did you booty? I'd say did you booty. That's that's how I'd pronounce that. Did you booty just by looking at it? Yes. Yes. Robert Murphy has a real good question here, and the answer sure. is yes. Were any outfit? Yeah, yeah. There's a second of, he asked this earlier. I think he asked us. Very patriotic. Earlier. Very patriotic guys. Uh, there were there were a lot of them. But, uh, several Marines. And uh, Alan Dorfman, he was a Marine. But there's a there was a lot of patriotic people uh, that were World War Two, some Vietnam. Not patriotic, but they were they were they actually in the military? They actually served in uh, a full a full uh, term. In the military, who else? Who else was Murray Humphreys? I don't know about him. Or Turrillo. Uh, Turk Turrillo. Turk Turrillo, definitely. He was right. I, I saw a picture of him posted on Facebook today. Somebody put up. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. There was a lot of uh, uh, kind of power hungry guys that uh, they were tough guys, and they just they didn't say no. They went. Okay. Oh, a, a lot of people were turned away at the draft board. <laughs> Sam, Sam DiStefano wanted to get in. He wanted to go in the, uh, in the Army, and they turned him away. They said he was a psychopath. Sam DiStefano <laughs> wanted to do a lot of things. You got that right. <laughs> but According to his letter to the, to the president. <laughs> oh, dude, this guy's got, I mean, mad Sam. No, he, what did he do? He had a city job. He was a garbage man or worked for the city services or something, collected a paycheck, right? Yes. And then he had money out on the street, juice money. Think, oh, about, it. Think about that. Here it is. All right, I got $100. Now I'm going to get it. He borrowed his money from Rika, Paul Rika. Mm -hmm. He borrowed his money from Paul Rika. When, he met Rika in prison when he was in Joliet. And uh, actually, I think Frank Collada was there at the same time, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. Every, him and um, he called a bushel head. I call him uh, <laughs> oh, Mike Switek. Mikey Switek. They were all there at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Sam got out, uh, he had 200 grand, I think he started with. And before that, it turned into millions. And he used to brag. He'd go down the street and brag. I heard him brag one time. He said, uh, I own all the juice loans. And this is when I didn't know any better. He said, I own all the juice loans between here and the, and the West Coast. And I really thought that was true. <laughs> I found out it wasn't true. There was a lot of people doing it. He just sure. was braggadacious. It's a great business to be in. You know, it's like, here, here's $100. Now, case, next that one case we just talked about where the guy was on trial for it. He borrowed $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is the 2016. He borrowed $10,000. And in 2023, he still owed $10,000. And every week he had to pay a thousand dollars. Here's a thousand dollars. Here's a thousand dollars. Think about that. Hey, give me ten percent a week. All right, I'm gonna give you a hundred. That means you, you you're gonna give me a thousand. That means each week you can give me a hundred dollars. But you still owe me the thousand. I <laughs> You better pay off that interest, uh the Rock, man. I wanna be in that business. That's like being a hooker. You got <laughs> it, you sell it, you still got it. Uh, <laughs> oh man! Tom Berlin says Tom Berlin says Lucky Luciano was accidentally, actually, responsible okay. for the helping, saving America from German invasion using the New York harbors, which he controlled. Um, the UN actually went to him, cut him a deal in early World War II. Yeah, Luciano was involved. In it. Here, back up here though. But I'm gonna go back a few. Rocky and Felice. Was a paratrooper? Yes, he was. 80, 80 Henry, second airborne. Henry Hill was a paratrooper? Yes. Henry Hill? Henry, really? Yeah, that alcoholic. <laughs> Henry Hill. 
He went over hill. He went over the hill. He he deserted. He was in the army. This guy right here. This he little was, guy was yeah, a paratrooper. He was in the That's army for a short period of time, and he, he went over the hill. Hey, I met Hen. I met Henry a few times. That dude liked to. He liked the sauce, man. Big time. <laughs> No, I'm I'm just saying, man, he did. He just Oh he man, he pushed the shaving lotion away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, he pushed the shaving lotion away. Oh God, Red. What the hell? All right, so guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is Red Wilmette over here. And uh I'm Adam Flowers, and we're having a good time talking about Chicago history. Oh no, this way. <laughs> Talking about Chicago history, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You never know what the hell we're going to talk about. We could end up going down that rabbit hole and talk about Nessie, okay, to our two folks from Scotland today. We could, or we could, uh, we could, we could pick up with uh, Rick Charlton and talk about uh, aliens. You know, they're among us already. The planet was seeded. <laughs> You know, if you go through genealogy, you could say, okay, how much alien am I? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Let's do ancestry. Where, like, how much, how much reptilian alien am I? <laughs> how much of the gray people am I? The gray, the gray people, the tall gray giants or the, anyway. Sammy, Sammy the Bull was in Vietnam. Sammy was in Vietnam, Trail Dusty. I don't think he was. I... He got he got kicked out. He went over. He did a lot of things wrong. Hold on, Sammy the Bull said he was in the military. BSJ right said the military. He got kicked out. Huh? Did he got yeah. kicked out? Keith, I left in nineteen eighty eight permanently. September fifteenth, nineteen eighty eight. When did you leave Chicago? When was it? September fifteenth, nineteen eighty eight permanently. I left in eighty seven and went and bought a house. I was eleven years old, man. When you were like. I'm out. <laughs> I was moving, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, McZag Jan. Let's go to our folks from Scotland. Uh, have you watched the British made Crime Incorporated? I think it was made in the late 70s or early 80s. It's on YouTube. I, I, I haven't. Yeah. Crime Incorporated. Have you seen that? No. We'll have to look it up. We'll have yeah. to look it up and, and, and put it on. Sounds, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Songs about the mob, anyone? Speaking of Carl Foster, Red put up a song the other day on his page, The Pirates of... The Lincoln Park Pirates. The Lincoln Park Pirates. There's a song about the mob. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know any other songs about, a mo about the mob. Is there any songs about the mob? They weren't looking for fame. They were looking no. for money. They were looking for money. Well, what else do they look for? Money. What did what they, what they guy, one guy say, Bugsy Siegel, or uh, what's his name? Um, Bugsy Siegel's mentor. Uh, Lucky Luciano, Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lansky. Meyer Lansky said, famous is good for some people, but not for us. We don't need to be famous. And he was right. <laughs> if you're going to do, hey, listen, if you're going to do bad shit, and you're not going to be on the up and up and be an upstanding person in the community, then yeah, you want to hide in the fucking dark. Definitely. You do. You want to hide in the dark. Definitely. And that's what that's what bad people do. That's what they do. They hide. They're cowards. All right. I have a whole theory about that. I'm not going there. <laughs> All right, Julie M. There's not many topics we would not cover. That's correct, Julie. We, we'll go anywhere you guys want to go. I mean, we do. We go anywhere you guys want to go. Uh, that's the kind of show that this is. So Julie, get a hold of me on uh, Facebook if you want to be a monitor for our uh, channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be a moderator? My, my, my channel, too. Yep. We'll definitely do that. Um, guys, you can go to mobmento.com. Oh, you got to tell them the pistol story. <laughs> you got to tell them. That's it. Mobmento.com, okay? The thing up there, that little thing in your fingers, hold it up to your palm of your hand or your fingers. There you go. That little thing, that caused him more grief. <laughs> it did. Adam, tell him the story. I just... 
Honest to God. Adam, Adam had somebody on the tour, and they bought. Okay, so look, these these are for sale. We sell yeah. them for forty bucks. You can get them at frankcolada.com, bobmento.com. Go to the website. It's a USB okay. stick. It's a USB stick. It's a little USB. I we sell them on the Mob Tour as a souvenir. They even say Mob Tour on the bottom of them. See this? Whoop, let me turn that over. <laughs> it's real tiny. It says Mob Tour on it, and it's got Vegas specialty tours on the side. It's a neat little. I mean, it's a USB stick. It's a it's a trinket, you know. And so TSA TSA thinks that's not a trinket. Apparently, apparently, you can't go through TSA with this. <laughs> okay, they'll confiscate it. You believe that shit, Red? No, I believe one. Guy. I did, I can't believe it either. I can't believe. I mean, look, it's got. Listen, it's got I'd some weight to it, for man. A I mean, I'd have definitely called for a supervisor. <sighs> I wouldn't have put up with that. And I'm no lawyer. Oh my God, man! What the? What the? All right. Um, Exag Jan, thank you for sharing the link. You guys want to go check out that uh, video? Go look at it. There's the link. Copy paste. Um, <laughs> hey, go US uh, Mickey Griggs. I'll help mod Red and Adam if possible. Uh, Mickey will definitely. Mickey's a good guy. Been Mickey, around for about three years, hanging out on our channel. Yeah, he's been around a long time. Mickey was on. Yeah. He was a fan of mine years ago. Put him as a put him as a moderator. Carl Faustin, not plane friendly. I guess not. I and I looked it up on TSA's website. Here's the standing thing. If it is a replica of a gun, doesn't matter if it's a Nerf gun, squirt gun. If it looks like a gun, you can't take it on a plane. And I guess that includes USB sticks. If they want to, I mean, it's crazy that they're. Come on, hold that up like you're gonna like you're gonna throw. No, they make it. That's it. Give me your money. That's it. Give me your money, or I'm gonna fire. Oh my god! Hold it up like they, this. Well, they make one. They make one in Switzerland. There's a gun made in Switzerland, and it's this small. It does. It's this small. The trigger actually oh, down, it extends past the little uh, the little trigger guard. It extends past it so that you can you can pull it. And I don't know what it shoots. A grain of salt. I, <laughs> I have no idea. You know, they like you got to pull a rubber band back before you fucking do it. it but I guess they make one that's that small, and so they're anyway. If um, I, now I'm afraid to mail these things in the in the uh, USB, oh, you know. You guys can go and buy one of these, and I'll mail it to you. Hold I'll it, take the I, I had one to hold up. You hold it up, and you you're on. That's it. Your money or your life. You can go up, take it as long as it's really. Yeah, I'd look at that and laugh and be like, "Are hey, you fucking around?" You know what I mean? Smack <laughs> upside the head, being an idiot. Oh, red. Uh, that's the link for Inc. Uh, Jimmy Fradiano is one of the interviewees. Thank you very much for sharing that, McZag Jan. We will. Um, I'm going to check it out after we uh, get off the air today. So, once we. Uh, Scott H. Billy Barty had a gun that small. It was the guy that broke out of jail with the bar of soap and he carved it up. Don like John. Jenner. And he that did the shoe polish on the thing, and he made it look like a gun. And he made it look like, yeah. Fuck, <laughs> he got away with it, man. The cop was like, oh, oh, no, no, don't shoot me with your bar of soap. <laughs> As clever. The bad part is, at the end, he tossed him. After he had him uh, subdued, and he had a real firearm, he yeah. tossed him the soap and gave it to him. <laughs> did he really? <laughs> <laughs> I was that cop, man. <laughs> That happened in Indiana. Oh my God, that's that's. There's nothing worse than that than getting Crown your squad car stolen. That happened at Crown Point, Indiana. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. It was in Crown Point Jail. Yeah, man, God, Tommy Bridges, welcome in. You're late to the party, but you know what that means. <laughs> you made it. You made it exactly. That's the most important part. The three guys that escaped from, they say three guys escaped from Alcatraz. They made a movie about it. I Clint believe. Eastwood. Clint Eastwood was in it. That's a great movie. Well, we looked that up. We did a, we did a, a, we, I don't know. We were checking it out. And there were some guys in South America that took pictures and they said we made it. They were gold miners or something. We, 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 yeah, we looked at that one day. We did. We did a whole show on this, didn't we? Yes. Yes, and we I, did. Because we showed up. They were the pictures. Oh. 
And it looks like them. It really does. It's like, you know, that could be them aged a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you hey, if you and I were in prison. <laughs> I got your back, Adam. You can better have mine. No, no, you ain't got my back. <laughs> Get the hell away from my back. <laughs> anyway, if we're sitting there in a cell and go, hey, got an idea. We're going to make some paper mache heads. We're going to put them in the bag and we're going to get some fake hair. You know, we'll cut our own hair and we'll glue it to the shit. And, we'll, and then we're going to sneak out through this hole. We're going to get on a raft that we make out of our, uh, what they make them out of? Life uh, out of uh, rain jackets and shit, right? Raincoats? Yeah, they they got them together? Yeah. You got to have a lot of fucking time on your hands, but that's all you have when you're in jail, right? It's just time. So if, let's you, told me that, if you told me that, Adam, I would say, uh huh. No, and then and then we're gonna we're gonna fill them with air, and then we're getting these fuckers, and we're gonna cross freezing cold, shark infested water, and get to San Francisco land right there. Choppy, in choppy freezing cold, water. choppy freezing cold, dude. Bay water, man. Like this is not. It's a great fucking place to put a prison. It's like Australia. They figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I went to Australia. They said to me as I was going in through immigration. They said, have you been convicted of any felonies? I said, is that still a requirement? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't discriminate on this channel. We make fun of everybody. So if you're from Australia and you're down under, hey, mate. <laughs> How's he prison? Of, he, he makes fun of me, so <laughs> what's the difference? <laughs> I tease him all the time. Hey, if you can't laugh at yourself, man, what the hell can you let you know? Come on. Uh, it's all right. You. It's you right there. You are the one. That all right. So let me get back to this hypothetical situation. We're on a raft in this choppy water getting out of Alcatraz. We get to San Francisco. Another fine mess you got me into, Ollie. <laughs> It's the biggest fucking escape of the century, and we're the two that did it. Don't you think that we're going to write something and send it to the fucking officials going, fuck you? <laughs> you know what I mean? You would they have to. You wrote have to. The they wrote to the warden. They did. They said, we got out. Fuck you, right? I mean, basically, is what the letter was. And handwriting analysis, they won't, they won't tell you. Even the FBI today will not tell you if that's true or not. I mean, yeah. analysis. Wow. Bank robbery. If you can't laugh at yourself, then we'll all laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, there's somebody will do it for you. <laughs> uh, you guys are great. You guys are awesome. It's, um, it's a shame, though, that this afternoon has to come to an end, but all good things must end. And um, other things begin. I'm going over to my show. Yeah, we're going to be starting up on uh, Red's channel. So, hey, guys, next time you come to Vegas, be sure to do the Vegas Mob Tour. Um, it's Use promo code MOBVLOG. It's down there at the bottom. That'll get you 20% uh, off. So, makes it 100 bucks a person. Yeah, it's a great to tour. You'll never, you'll never be. And if you don't have 100 bucks to go on a tour, don't come to Vegas. <laughs> Honestly, you know. Uh, it's expensive nowadays, man. Things okay. are, I mean, you see the price of gas. I don't even want to go there. Gas is not that expensive. I mean, what's it by you? It's over four bucks a gallon. Wow. Gas is uh three nineteen by me. Yeah. It's over four bucks a gallon here. I know in Chicago it went up too, but. Ah, uh, anyway. We have a refinery right down the road here. <laughs> we have an oil refinery right down the road. God. All right, Red. Everybody that's out there, thank you very much. God bless. Uh, thanks for stopping in and watching the show. Uh, we'll be on again next week, I think. It might be an early show next week. I don't know. I, I might have a tour. No, I think I got a tour booked already for next week. I didn't shut down the Wednesdays and I booked tours and we might do an early show. Um, but we'll be on at some point on Wednesday. And we'll see you guys then. Uh, you get a chance, though, come to Vegas. Do the Vegas Mob Tour. Thanks, guys. It's been fun. Oh, or do the Vegas Crime Tour. Yes. You're right. all about O.J. Simpson. And by yeah. the way, get his book. We're going to have it for sale. 
It's autographed. They're autographed books by OJ. Right here, autographed. On frankculata.com or mobmento.com. Go to either. They both go to the same place. Get your get your uh, get your OJ Simpson book. <laughs> 125 bucks. That's what they're going to be. Kyle Foster, I remember the $1.99 buffet in Las Vegas. When was that? Those days are gone, man. 99 cent shrimp cocktail. Adios. Yo, Bugsy. It says here they got something called the Vegas Mob Tour. Yeah, Bobby, ain't you heard? It's all about our old friends, Sam G and Connor, Meyer Lansky, Mo Dalitz, and of course yours truly, Bugsy Siegel. Are you kidding? A mob tour about us? Yeah, they take you to where we used to hang out and to all the places where we used to do our crimes. You mean they expose all our secrets? Yeah, but it's okay, because we ain't around anymore. So, let's face it, <laughs> we can't get busted. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you think we can sneak on board and check this out? Of course we can. Forget about it. They'll never even know we're there.